Did you know that 70% of our waking day is spent in some sort of communicative activity? Of that 70%, between 45 and 50% of our time is spent listening. I'd like to take a couple of minutes to talk about some important aspects of listening. And as we're working through this, if you find yourself having any questions, feel free to pause the video and email, call, or if you're on the Claremont campus, stop on by. So let's begin with some misconceptions about listening. Um, people often think that listening is a natural process. If you are a hearing-abled individual, hearing is different than listening. Hearing is all about biology, sounds reverberating off of um, surfaces and then going and processing through the eardrum to produce a sound. But listening, on the other hand, is a very active, involved process. So listening is not a natural process. Listening is a skill. Um, another misconception is that people think that listening is really easy and that it requires little effort. In fact, it requires a lot of effort depending upon the messages that we're receiving. In a couple minutes, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the different types of listening because depending upon the type will depend upon how active the process is, which will then require you to use certain levels of effort. Another misconception is that all listeners receive the same message. This is false. We all can listen to a message and walk away hearing certain aspects of the message based upon uh, physiological, social, cultural, and personal factors that influence our listening. It's kind of like when we were talking about perception and this idea that um, the perception process is how we select, organize, and interpret. But that's typically based upon what we are bringing to the table based upon our past experiences and present feelings and circumstances. The same rules apply to how we listen. We've got those physiological factors, social factors, cultural factors, and just personal experience that um, influences how we listen. So those are some misconceptions. Let's talk about the listening process itself. Listening again is a very active process and it starts with hearing. That's that uh, cycle or physiological dimension of listening. So it involves a process to be able to interpret sound based upon how it um, resonates off of different surfaces. Next is how we filter out and focus in on what it is that we're hearing. After that, the third step, or the third step in the process, I should say, is interpreting and making sense of the message. So we're attempting to hear, attend, and then make sense of what it is that we think that we've heard. And based upon that process, the next process is responding. So this is where, because listening is an active process, so we're attempting to hear the message, filter out and focus, and then understand and interpret. And based upon that, we give a response to the sender. And then the last step is remembering. Our ability to paraphrase and recall information based upon what we heard. So that is the listening process. Um, let's talk about some faulty aspects to listening. The first faulty aspect I'd like to touch on is pseudo listening. This is where we're pretending to listen. We might check in here and there to attempt to verbally and non-verbally respond. But when we're pseudo listening, we're not really listening at all. Next is selective listening, and this is where we attempt to screen out parts of messages not, that we're not interested in or that we might disagree with. So we attempt to, have you ever heard the saying, we attempt to hear what we want to hear? That's selective listening. Another faulty listening behavior is stage hogging. Some of us like to be the center of attention and we like to be the person that's speaking versus the person that's listening. And that's what we call stage hogging. Another faulty listening behavior is defensive listening. 
if we are feeling and interpreting as if we're being attacked or being criticized or it's a hostile message, we might put ourselves on the defensive, which influences how we listen. So we're defensively listening because we're perceiving things um, as if we're being personally attacked. Another faulty listening behavior is what we call ambushing. And ambushing is when we're listening carefully for purpose of attacking the speaker. So if we're um, ambushing, we're listening for key pieces of information to use against the speaker, to, to retaliate back. Um, lastly is insulated listening. So um, we avoid certain topics or issue, like we refuse to hear them at all and it's typically based upon our perception of the message so or and and based upon that it's also maybe to save an interaction that's happening happening or saving face um politics are a big one sometimes we just don't like to talk about politics politics and family or politics and business don't mix but um we attempt to avoid topics related to that so we we don't want to listen to them um, we also have insensitive listening, and that might be being unable to look beyond words and behavior to understand a message. So sometimes if we have somebody who we just really don't like, um, we might be unable to look beyond what we don't like about that person to listen to the message. And that's another and final faulty reason of uh, faulty listening habit. Um, let's talk about reasons for poor listening. Sometimes we're getting too many messages. We're being bombarded with messages. So it might be difficult to listen, listen due to message overload. Sometimes we're th have, having thoughts and we're thinking about what it is that we want to say next. And that's what we call rapid thought, which is another reason for poor listening is we're too concerned with what we're gonna say next. So we're thinking about that versus listening to the message. Um, psychological noise, that's um, the noise that's happening inside of our head. So um, if you're not feeling well or you're worried about something, that's that psychological noise that's happening inside of our head. So we're focused in on that versus listening to what the person that we're communicating with is actually saying. Um, we also have physiological noise or physical noise. This is the noises that we hear in the environment that's around us. We attempt to compartmentalize those things. However, um, sometimes that can be difficult and when we can't, we're listening to that psych uh, the physiological or physical noise and we're not listening to the person that's communicating with us. Another reason for poor listening is we have hearing problems. If we physically, it's biologically, we're having difficulty hearing you, we're going to have difficulty listening to the message. Another reason for poor listening is we jump to false assumptions or false conclusions. Um, and when we do that, we are so concerned with um, going, there's a, trying to understand the hidden meaning behind the message that um, we stop listening. Another faulty listening, another reason for poor listening might be um, talking has its advantages. It kind of goes back to stage hogging. When you can talk versus listen, you can get your point across quickly versus having to listen first and then respond. Cultural differences also influence our reason for poor listening. Um, we talked about cultural aspects as it relates to perception, how we select, organize, and interpret, but cultural differences also influence how we listen. If we are listening to somebody who has a completely different outlook on life due to culture, we might find it a challenge to listen. Um, also, media influences our um, listening and that depending upon what we're listening to, because the media is trying to scream at us most of the time, um, this could influence um, how we listen to the message, or we might tune it out altogether. 
So when you see these reasons for poor listening, or even when you see um, the, ta the, the different types of listening that I'm going to get into next, understand that I'm explaining them one by one, but in one conversation, all of these things can be happening. You can be experiencing message overload along with rapid thought, which can lead to poor listening. Or you can be experiencing psychological and physiological noise, which influences your listening. So it's not just a one size fits all. Multiple things are happening at the same time. So let's spend a couple of minutes talking about task oriented listening. Task oriented listening, the goal here is to obtain information. So right now, if you're listening to this mini lecture, you're attempting to gain information. You don't argue or judge. You try to avoid um, experiencing rapid thought. You try to avoid jumping to conclusions. Your goal is to just gain information. Um, you separate the speaker, so in this case me, from the message that I'm sending. You're attempting just to analyze to gain information. When we're task oriented listening, it's super important to ask questions. That's why I'm always asking, you know, if, if you find yourself with questions, please let me know right away so I can help you. Um, so asking questions is key because in task oriented listening because you're attempting to gain well-rounded information. It's important to take notes when you're task listening. You want to write down key ideas you don't want to wait. Um, writing down the key ideas and then writing down any questions that you have so that way when you have an opportunity to ask you can go back and ask it and then you'll get that information and you won't have to stop listening. Um, lastly in task oriented listening is paraphrasing. This is where you're taking the information and attempting to share it in your own words. So that's task oriented listening. The goal is to obtain information. Next is critical listening. The goal of critical listening is to assess quality of the message. So when we're critically listening, we are attempting to either accept or reject the message. Here you are evaluating the speaker's credibility through examining their evidence, so the support that they're using and their reasoning behind the support. You also want to examine how they're using emotional appeal. So how are they attempting to appeal to your mind and to your heart? And that is critical listening. So you're just assessing the quality of the message to either accept it or reject it. Next is analytical listening. This is one of my favorite types of listening because your whole goal is to obtain a variety of perspectives. So this might be most evident when you're listening to people in your group discuss, if you're in a group situation. Um, you're attempting to gather a variety of perspectives, but you're also judging the quality of the message to either accept it or reject it. So you're listening though specifically to the information that's being given to you and then judging that quality of the information to accept or reject it. And again, you're getting a variety of perspectives in order to do that. Next is relational listening. Again, this is one of my favorites. Relational listening is all about advising. So you're attempting to listen to provide support, solutions, suggestions, and to give choices. You um, are judging or evaluating the message positively or negatively while maintaining respect for the individual. So in this judging step, you're relationally listening and you're evaluating the message um, through a positive or a negative lens, but you're still maintaining respect for the individual. You're also analyzing. So you're attempting to interpret the message and break down the elements. When you were relational listening, you're also questioning. So you're attempting, you're not questioning to evaluate necessarily. You're questioning to provide yourself further understanding to remove any sort of uncertainty from the sender. Um, you're also providing comfort. So offering agreement, um, helping, giving praise, reassurance, um, and acknowledgement. 
When you're relational listening, you want to prompt the individual to continue to talk. So um, they might be using silence. Um, and during that silence, that might be a really great place where you offer encouragement to draw out a more detailed response. Classic cases, if you're listening to maybe your, your child or an employee and you're doing so to provide support, um, you might want to use a little prompting to help them draw out more explanation in how it is that they're feeling, thinking, or processing um, based upon what it is that they're sharing with you. So those are just highlighting some key aspects of listening. Again, as you go through this PowerPoint mini lecture with me, if you have any questions, feel free to email, call, or stop by.